Howdy boys and girls, this is Mrs. Dunn. Today we are going to start on our second um, lesson. It's over equivalent fractions, decimals, and percents. So on your next clean sheet of paper in your I and B, go ahead and label their, their title. You have this foldable. It has these words on one side and you were given the um, information here. So if you can make sure that this is folded and put in correctly, you have to use some scissors to cut it. Go ahead and do this now. Pause as you need to and come back. Okay, so we're going to be talking about how any fraction, decimal, or percent can be rewritten into an equivalent form of a percent, decimal, or fraction. And there is basically six combinations of ways that we can do that, to do those conversions. We're going to start with our first one, which is decimal to percent. I started with the easy ones first. So it says over here, it says, Move the decimal two places to the right and add a percent sign. So if you start with a decimal, a value less than 1, of 23 hundredths, I'm going to move it to the right two spaces. So I go over 1, over 2, and my decimal will go here now. So it's now it's 23%. So 23 hundredths and 23% are exactly the same thing. Notice over here it says DP, Dr. Pepper, It's because it goes decimal to percent, so it moves to the right. Same thing here, I move it over once, I move it over twice. There's a problem though, we don't have anything in the space right here. So we put a zero. Because six tenths and sixty hundredths are exactly the same thing. So this is sixty percent. So twenty-three hundredths, six tenths. 23 hundredths is 20 percent, 6 tenths is 60 percent. All right. If I'm moving along too fast, remember you can pause. Percents to decimals, also very easy. If we are given a percent, we just simply remove the sign, and it says move the decimal two places to the left. So now we're going backwards on Dr. Pepper, because it's Dr. Pepper decimal percent, so it's percent to decimal. So now, the question is, where is my decimal whenever I have this percent sign right here? 16%. My decimal is right after that 6. So if I'm going to move it 2 to the left, I go over 1, over 2, and now it's back here. So that's equal to 0.16, or 16 hundredths. 8%, again, my decimal starts right here. I'm going to move it back two spaces, this time going to the left. Again, I have to add a zero because if I'm moving it two spaces, there has to be something there. So this is equal to 0 0.08 or 8 hundredths. 8 percent, 8 hundredths. Okay, those are my easy, easy ones. If we move down a little bit, we're going to move from fractions to decimals. Okay, guys, remember, make sure that you take the time to put down the information. Fractions to decimals are a little bit trickier. They involve a little more math. It says we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. Remember, our numerators are on top, our denominators are on bottom. We can also look at it if we have our house, our numerator goes inside the house, our denominator goes outside the house. We do TIBO, top in, bottom out. So if I have a fraction here, 2 fifths, remember 2 fifths is a proper fraction, so on the number line it's between 0 and 1 which means it should be less than 1, but greater than 0. It should be a decimal. So if I'm going to change this fraction into a decimal, I'm going to divide. We've also talked about how this, this line right here that makes up a fraction is also known as a division sign. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and divide. Top in, so my top number is my 2. My bottom number is my 5. When I do this, 5 does not go into 2, and it shouldn't because this is a number less than 1. So what we do here is I can't divide this properly until I have another number. So if I want to add a decimal point and a 0, 2 and 2.0 are exactly the same thing. Okay, I'm going to bring my decimal point on top of my house, and now I can say 5 goes into 20, 5 goes into 20 how many times? Well, 5 times 4 is 20, so 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 5 is 20. I subtract that out. I get 0 left over, and now I know I'm done. If I came up with something that wasn't 
a zero number, I'd have to add another zero here and bring it down as we move through that. But in this case, two-fifths is equal to 0.4. Okay, so I've changed my fraction into a decimal by dividing. Next up, we need to change our decimal into a fraction. So I have this decimal right here, 0.24. It says write the decimal over 100 if the value goes to the hundredths or over 10 if the value goes to the tenths and then simplify. So what we're basically saying is you have to name that decimal. It says 0.24 that last place value of my number is what we say it goes out to. That four is in the hundredths place. So this is 24 hundredths. So if it goes to, to the hundredths, you put it over 100. So this is 24 over 100. Now it tells me I need to simplify. Simplifying means reducing that fraction. What is something I can factor out of 24 and 100? Well, I know they're both even, so I can start off with 2. I'm going to divide by a one-ster of 2. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 100 divided by 2 is 50. So now I'm going to rewrite it down here, 12 over 50. 12 over 50 and 24 over 100 are equivalent fractions. Is this in its most simplified form? No, because 12 and 50 have a common factor, and that factor could be 2 as well. So I can divide by 2 over 2 again. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 50 divided by 2 is 25. I need to know if I'm done here. The factors of 6 are 2 and 3. The factors of 25 are 5. So this is in its lowest form because I can't divide a 6 and 25 by anything other than itself. So 24 hundredths written as a fraction is 6 over 25. So this is my final answer here. Again, I decided it went over 100 because it went out to the hundredths place and then I simplified it down. All right. Next up, we are talking about fractions to percents. So if you are given a fraction, you can write an equivalent fraction over 100, if possible, or you'll need to convert that fraction into a decimal, and then you have a decimal to percent, so you move that decimal two places to the right, because remember that's Dr. Pepper, decimal to percent. So if I look at my fraction here, we can do this one both ways. So if I look three-fifths, can I make an equivalent fraction over 100? Can I get from 5 to 100? I know that I can because I know that 5 times 20 gets me to 100. So I'm going to multiply by 20 here and by 20 here. 3 times 20 is 60. And that's 60 hundredths. Well, remember when we talked about how percents are out of 100? This is out of 100, so this is 60%. Now again, an alternate way, because not every fraction goes into 100, is to divide. That's a fraction. Fractions can be divided top in, bottom out. So think, what's the number that goes inside my house? Hopefully you thought 3. My outside number is 5. 5 does not go into 3, so what do we need to do? Hopefully we know we add that decimal point and that zero, bring the decimal point to the top of the house, and then we can divide. How many times does five go into 30? That's six, because six times five is 30. I subtract that out, I get zero. And now I have this decimal that I'm gonna move two places to the right. So one, two, add that zero back in, and again, that is 60%. Last bit, percent to fraction. Percent to fraction says rewrite the percent over 100 and then simplify. That seems pretty easy. 24%, we know percents are out of 100, so 24 over 100. And then, what do I need to do to divide? I divide by, well, didn't we kind of do that up here? 
we divided by 2, and then we divided by a 2 again. So 2 times 2 is 4, so that's really dividing by 4 over 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 100 divided by 4 is 25. Because remember, 6 times 4 is 24. And I can think of 100 as in quarters. Four quarters are in a dollar, so that's out of 25. So I've made this fraction, or this percent, into a fraction. And it's the same number that we have here. Okay, so we have gone over decimals to percents, percents to decimals, fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions, fractions to percents, and percents to fractions. Use this foldable to help you solve these questions that we have coming up over the next couple days. Okay, over on the opposite side of your page, you have your whisk. Remember, this is required for your homework. It is, you've watched the video, you write a summary or a question. Summary statement's a complete sentence about something that you've learned. Or a question is, I don't understand something, or a question like you would make on a quiz, like I might sh use for a quiz. This is the space you use that for. Then we have check for understanding. I just have two questions I'm going to ask you. The first one is to change 5 eighths to a decimal and a percent, so I need 5 eighths as a decimal and a percent. And what is 6% as a fraction and a decimal? So you need to change that percent to a fraction and a decimal. Okay, I hope that we can get that done, and I look forward to seeing your work tomorrow. Thank you.